Welcome to Wildlife Outdoors with your host, Russell and Jose. If you have a passion for conservation of the outdoors, or you're enjoying a calming hike in the mountains, an exhilarating kayak trip on the river, feeling a fish on the end of your line, cooking on an open flame in a primitive campsite, or stalking big game, just waiting for the perfect shot, you're in the right place. So put on your boots and polarized sunglasses and come along for the ride. Welcome back to another episode of Wildlife Outdoors, guys. We've got another exciting one for you today. Today, Jose is not with us again, but this is probably the last episode without him. But we are welcomed today by a fly fishing aficionado, a smallmouth junkie, the founder of Ozark Media Group, and a filmographer and videographer, Joe Ram. How are you doing today, man? I'm yeah, doing great. Thanks for having me on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm happy to have you on, man. Uh, I'm, so for the, the viewers and listeners, uh, I've actually met him once before. We went and filmed uh, out up in the Ozarks, and he is actually the one that made the intro video that you guys have been seeing the past few weeks. So, uh, I mean, he does some great stuff, and I really appreciate it, man. It's The intro, I've had a lot of great feedback on. It is awesome. So thank you for that. Yeah, I was excited about that one. You know, it's like right in line with kind of my ideal customer for Ozark Media Group. So um that was really fun to do and i hope we get to do one again soon oh we definitely need to hopefully i'll be up there in the ozarks a little more it seems like every time i go up to the ozarks i fall in love even more with it it's just so gorgeous up there it's so peaceful so much water the scenery is amazing the fishing's great so hopefully i'll be up there a lot more (laughs) yeah yeah we're pretty blessed around here like we are just surrounded by beautiful ozark hills and the clearest streams you'll ever see especially in the middle of the summer right now when we got super low water like you can see the fish from a mile away um but it's just a beautiful place to be and i I love living here that's awesome so if the fish are that easy to see are you that easy to see for them does that hinder the fishing at all for sure yeah about this time of year is kind of when i put the raft away because Mm -hmm. uh the raft is just like a big hey go hide you know it's like All the smallmouths, any fish nearby, it's like, hey, you guys need to go hide. So uh, this time of year, I like to bust out the paddle boards or do a lot more wade fishing because it's a little bit easier not to spook the fish. Like when you're bumping down the river in that big raft, uh, it's pretty hard to to sneak up on the fish. So, yeah. I can imagine. Yeah, because I know that, I mean, here we have the Washita and the Caddo, and uh, from time to time, they're pretty clear, but uh, not nearly as clear as some of those Ozark streams up there. And, and the tough, the fishing gets tough in the summer for sure. And I mean, mixture between the heat and the low dissolve oxygen and then just being able to be seen by them makes it very difficult. So, but I mean, yeah. up there, it's, uh, I think the water's a little bit more clear. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that would be my, my advice to anybody is, uh, try to fish after it rains. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> makes it a lot easier. Put a little bit of dirt in the water. <laughs> yeah. So Ozark Media Group, how how did that idea even come about for you? Man, uh, you know, it's kind of hard for me to pin a specific moment that it all came together. But uh, a few, I think it was back in 2020, um, my wife's parents got us a, just like a little point shoot camera for Christmas. And, you know, just, just something that uh, like, I don't know, it's probably a $150 camera. But I started taking pictures of my, my son who was, you know, he wasn't even a year old at the time. And, and then I would, and I started taking it out when I was going fishing and trying to get some cool shots, uh, while I was out fishing for smallmouth and, and trout and stuff. So, uh, I was carrying that camera and I was fishing the beaver tailwaters and this guy, I see this guy downstream for me and he is just like every cast almost, he's like coming tight. And, you know, I'm fishing a streamer, so I wasn't catching any fish, but he's catching <laughs> fish after fish after fish. And then it's like, I, he, he starts walking over to me. I can see him in my peripherals. And, uh, he's like, Hey man, can you take a photo of me with this fish? And he pulls out like this 20 inch brown trout and it's all colored up and red and just beautiful looking fish. And so he gets down and I, I pull out my, you know, the, the little point shoot camera I had and I got that photo of him. And it turned out to be a great photo. And then pretty much after that, I was hooked. <laughs> just like being able to send that photo to him and uh, like capture that memory of a, you know, like maybe a personal best fish and then have a high quality picture, you know, to go to his friends and show it. Like, I don't know, just something about that made me 
super excited to keep taking photos. So it's all just kind of evolved from there. And the more that I get, you know, hooked into the Ozarks and meeting people who are into the outdoor experience here, um, I just want to work with those people who are as in love with the Ozarks as I am and help tell their story and really help tell the story of the Ozarks to, you know, people who live here, but also people who have just moved here um, and people who maybe are thinking about coming or maybe have never even heard of it and should probably come. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's awesome. It, it's, it's crazy because I feel the same way about photography and, and getting now into videography, which is something I'm trying to get more into where it's, to me, it's capturing memories that you may not always remember. Like, of course, you're probably always going to remember your personal best fish and you're going to remember, you know, things that are the first of something, but you're not going to remember all the small, minute details of floating the river on a gorgeous spring day. Or you may not remember all the little details of when you went hiking or, you know, kayaking or camping or anything like that. And you'll remember the, you know, wide scale memory of it. But when you go back and look at the footage or look at the pictures, all of the minute details and everything that you capture, all of the emotions and everything flood back. And I'm kind of on a fine line to where I like to enjoy my time when I'm out. But at the same time, I want to capture it. Like, it's like, do I take the camera? Or do I not take the camera? Or do I just take this camera? Or do I take this camera? And it's like, how much do you want to deal with? And how much do you just want to not deal with technology? And it's hard because I love capturing everything. And I love sharing the details and sharing the footage and pictures that I capture. And sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm just, I'm just going to take the GoPro and let the GoPro do its thing. And I'll look back at it later. Um, but I definitely feel that like capturing those memories and, and seeing the reactions of other people when, of the pictures and videos you capture of them is just, it feeds the soul. <laughs> For sure. That's why we do it. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I think every photographer and videographer struggles with the same thing. I know whenever I go out on my local creek, it's like, <sighs> do I take the camera or am I just going to go fishing? Like, you know, what experience mm -hmm. am I trying to have? And I'm like, most of the times I just end up taking the camera and lugging it along. Cause I'm like, well, what if this is the time that I catch 20, you know, I want to get a, yep. a photo of that. But, um, but yeah, then like, we're now going on a float trip. Now I have the raft and it's like, well, okay, I just bring all the stuff. So then I've got like tripod, the whole camera box with three lenses and, and the whole shebang. So yeah, I mean, it's something that we all struggle with for sure. Right. And it's always better to have it, not need it than need it and not have it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unless you, unless you, uh, don't need it and then you drop it in the river or something like that, but yeah. knock on wood that we don't do that. anytime. <laughs> That's why you have waterproof <laughs> cases, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That would be a, a, a tough one. <laughs> and my camera that I use, it's pretty big and bulky. Um, hopefully I'll be going to a mirrorless soon and have a little bit more compact. Um, but right now with this D750 that I have, it's just big it's a behemoth and so it's hard like i don't have a little sling pack or hip pack that i can fit it in so i always have to put it in my backpack and then take it out and it's it's a hassle so sometimes it just yeah. stays in there like when i was out with you i had it with me it just stayed in the backpack the whole time <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i mean I, I find it's it's way easier uh when you're going out with somebody to just say like okay i'm gonna let this person fish and i'm just gonna get the shots right but whenever you're going out by yourself it's like you want to bring the camera just in case, but then it's always tough. Like if you do catch a fish and you're trying to set up the camera on the tripod, like on the side of the river and get the photo, like yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of tricky, but um, it is for sure. But it's a dick. You never know. You just do it anyways. <laughs> exactly. And you never know when the fish is going to hit, where the fish is going to hit. I was having this conversation with uh, Gatewood Brown. He was on for an episode and he does a lot of kayak camping and kayak uh, trips on YouTube. And uh, he tried doing a couple. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, it was in the Ozarks, but I think on the Oklahoma side. And um, he said it was difficult. He went out with, um, I can't remember what other, there was another YouTuber that he met up with that he went out and uh, they were doing a lot of fish and stuff. It was a uh, called collective. He was out with the, with called collective. Oh, yeah. And um, so they went out and that was Gatewood's first time trying to do like a fishing video. And uh, he said it was just extremely difficult because like, like he said, you like, there's no, you don't know where, when or anything when the fish is going to you know bite with him, you know, with his kayak and stuff, he can tell if he's coming up on some rough water and he knows there's going to be some water coming over the front of the boat. Like he can start his GoPro and know where to have his camera, but when you're fishing, it's way different. So uh, we kind of went into that conversation <laughs> a little bit and it's, uh, it's something that I'm still trying to learn how to do. Oh, me too. Um, I was out 
So I did a shoot for a Airbnb that's out in Flippin, Arkansas. It's like right on Crooked Creek. And I mean, just a beautiful log cabin. But so I went out there with a buddy, um, Clayton with Red's Guide Service. And we we took my raft and we went because it's only a 45 minute drive to Norfolk. Mm -hmm. Um, So we went and floated Norfolk in my raft. So it's just the two of us. So like he's fishing off the front of the boat. I'm rowing, but also trying to video at the same time. So, yeah, like it really would have helped to have a third person who could have rowed (laughs) the whole time, you know. (laughs) Right. Uh, Trying to multitask. (laughs) Yeah, it was tough. So, uh, yeah, and he hooked into like a, probably a 20 plus inch. I think we think it was either a cutthroat or a brown. It's kind of hard to tell, but the thing just like he hooked into it and a second later it just jumped up out of the water and spit the hook and it was gone. Oh. So, and that's one of those shots. It's like, man, if maybe if I had somebody in the back of the boat who was filming the whole time, we would have got that on camera, but right. you know, without a GoPro running, we did not have that shot. So. Man, that's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking to lose the fish, but it's heartbreaking to know that you had your camera and weren't able to get the shot. That's yeah. tough. Yeah, and it was a shot, you know, we wanted to get like we wanted to get a brown trout, a rainbow, and some smallmouth um on video kind of for that that cabin's video project that I'm working on. Mm-hmm. But the brown trout, I guess we'll have to catch that later. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had some footage that I could send you from that area. But I, I think all I have is pictures. <laughs> Don't have any videos, but yeah, dude, I love it up there. So you're talking about doing stuff for, uh, you know, the cabin and stuff. So what all, what all is the scope of stuff that you take pictures and, and do video for? Yeah. So uh, my main focuses right now are uh, short-term rentals. So Airbnb, VRBO properties that are located in the Ozarks. Like that cabin was a, was a great it's like basically the ideal client, right? It's like he owns a, a cabin and he's building an A-frame and they're right there, like, you know, four miles on a dirt road in the middle of nowhere. And uh, awesome. right on Crooked Creek, which is an epic smallmouth stream in Arkansas. And to go out there and be able to tell his story about like his properties and then that fishery as well and all the things that are around there, like that's what I'm targeting. Um, as well as people like you, I mean, you're in the outdoor industry right here in the Ozarks and you're, you know, in love with smallmouth bass and all those kinds of things. So fly fishing in general. So, um, you know, helping people like that. Uh, another one that I would like to get into more is mountain biking content. Mm-hmm. I've done some photo shoots with uh, the bike school Bentonville. They're a local uh, organization that does coaching for like elementary age kids who are trying to get into mountain biking and stuff. So I've gone out there and done some photos for them for their, like their website and uh, their social media account. Uh, but I would like to do some more mountain bike content uh, and really get into like the video stuff with that. And I would love to partner with like uh, YouTubers who are also doing that kind of stuff, you know, like they maybe they're running just a GoPro setup right now, but they want to kind of up their production value. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'd love to partner with people like that. and. I mean, pretty much just anybody who has any love for the outdoors that's like, you know, in the Ozark region. And then if we, you know, just conquer that, we can move on. But uh, I really love it around here. So I'd like to partner with the with the people that are close to us. Right. You know, I don't remember if I told you or not, but um, whenever I come across you, I didn't know that you were you. All I knew was Ozark Media Group. So I reached out to you about the commercial or, or the intro. And um, so I was like, okay, you know, I'm talking back and forth with you. I met up with you. I don't know. I don't remember at what point, but at some point I realized that like Ozark Media Group and your Ozark flywheel, that you were the same person. And yeah. a couple of years ago, I reached out to you because I saw that you had mountain biking stuff on your thing. And I wanted to go up mountain biking near Fayetteville. And uh, I just messaged <laughs> you. I was like, hey, man, like, uh, do you have any tips for a pointer or, or uh, for a beginner on mountain biking? And you gave me some areas to go and I went out there and dude, it was fun. I'd never mountain biked a day in my life. And oh, I, don't awesome. remember, I don't even remember where I went, uh, but it was just outside of Fayetteville and it was an absolute blast. I almost wiped out like numerous times, um, had to learn oh, yeah. what I could and couldn't handle as a beginner. Um, but dude, mountain biking is, <laughs> it's a freaking thrill, man. Like you pick up some speed going down those mountains. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Mountain biking is straight adrenaline. Well, and, and I guess it depends on like what style of riding you like to do. But for me, like I, 
I really got into mountain biking when I was living in Colorado. So Mm -hmm. for me, it was like really all about the downhills and, uh, you know, just torture yourself going uphill and you just do it so that you can get that adrenaline rush and go as fast as you can downhill. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's where I cut my teeth mountain biking and coming back here. It's just been a blast to ride a different style of trail. Um, and I, and I really want to like combine the two because around here, like up in Bella Vista and stuff, there's so many rides that you can, you know, connect to Little Sugar Creek. So I really want to start doing that kind of like mountain biking with a, with a fly rod on the bike and, you know, taking a break to go catch some small mouth and then keep riding. Dude, that would be awesome. Have you ever uh, watched Wildfly Productions on YouTube? Yeah, for sure. So did you <laughs> see their, their uh, bike packing video? Yeah, yeah. Dude, That's like that right up my alley. So I bought a gravel fun. bike because I want to do that, yeah. Dude, well, if you ever need someone to come along, I will happily come along because that sounds like an absolute blast. Yeah, I think I got a few people. We ought to put, we, we could probably put together a pretty good group. Uh, maybe throw some tents and sleeping a sleep setup on our on our bikes and ride out to the i don't know where the kings maybe or war eagle creek or something like that and just uh camp and fish and then ride home dude that would be awesome so speaking of the kings you're up on the kings what was it this past weekend weekend before weren't you over for the small mouse shootout yeah two weeks two weekends ago now i think how was that dude it was a blast i mean could i mean couldn't have drawn up the weather weather any better like conditions were perfect and uh the people there were awesome like that was that was really the reason i went i wanted to meet more people in who were into fly fishing for smallmouth in this area and Mm -hmm. it was just it was just awesome man couldn't have been better it was the second annual uh smallmouth shootout wasn't it yep awesome yeah the, the thing that sucks is i was up there and i didn't go i'd so I didn't know what weekend it was, and I knew I wanted to go up there and try to fish the cicada hatch. And so I was talking with my buddy Caleb, who was a conventional fisherman, and uh, I was like, "Yeah, man, I'm going to come up this weekend, and you know, we'll go do some fishing." And I wanted to go hit up either the the Kings, the Elk River up in Missouri, or uh, hit the White. And there was a section of the White that I was looking. I was like, "Oh, we can definitely shuttle ourselves here." It was like a 10.4 mile float, and I was like, "We'll get up early in the morning. We'll go do this. It's going to be awesome." And um, one of my other buddies that lives in the area was like, yeah, dude, it's going to be real good out there. He said, why don't you go do the, sh- the shootout, though? I said, oh, crap, is it, that's this weekend? And he said, yeah. And I was like, damn, my buddy's never had a fly rod in his hand before. I was like, I don't know if I want to put that on him. And then fishing from a kayak, <laughs> I said, uh, and so I was debating on it. And we just decided, nah, I'm not going to do that to him. And then so I was like, all right, well, we're going to go to the spot of the river. Actually, no, I lie. It was on the Illinois River, not on the White. And um, so I found that that float that would have been perfect well we didn't get up till late the next day so we ended up going out the night before and um got up later than expected on saturday morning and i was like man we're not going to be able to make because that was also when uh arkansas was hosting the regionals in baseball and so uh we wanted to go to that game as well well he wanted to go i'm a longhorn fan but i figured it'd be fun to go to anyways so i was like all right well we can't do that long float or else we won't make the game so we were like okay sweet i found another put in another takeout it was going to be like four miles or something like that. It would have been perfect time wise. Could have got off, gone back, gotten changed, got some food and went to the game. And then we go to the takeout, which is where we're going to leave his truck at. We're going to use my truck to drop off and we're pulling in. It was 1144 and they're like, Oh, we're closing the park at noon. And I was like, why? And they're like, well, because of the rain that we've had this past week, you know, there's not very many people coming through. So we're just going to shut it down at noon. I was like, well, can we at least leave his truck here, like parked along the gate or something? They said, no, you're going to have to go down to the next campsite. Well, that put it above 10 miles again. I was like, yeah, crap. So we couldn't do the Illinois. So we ended up going to, um, oh, what's that lake? Weddington. Went to Lake Weddington over there and um, didn't catch anything. He saw some huge grass carp. Um, I caught a perch and he caught a little, a little large mouth or maybe it was a spot, but, uh, it was, it was tough fishing for sure. It was, it seemed like it was extremely pressured. There wasn't very many people out there when we were there, but it seemed just the way the fish were acting, they seemed extremely pressured. Um, so yeah. kind of missed out on that, but I was thinking, you know, in hindsight, I was like, man, we should have just gone to the freaking Kings. If we would have known we weren't going to catch anything, <laughs> he would have been better off with a fly rod on the kayak doing the small mouth shootout anyways. So, <laughs> Yeah. But it looked like it was a good time out there. It, it was awesome. So it was uh, the the way that the tournament was set up is it's uh, a one fly 
you, you and your teammate have to choose one fly to fish mm-hmm. the entire day. And then once one of you loses that fly, then you're out of the one fly bracket, which like the one fly bracket is the one that you want to win because it had the, the nicest rods. And then if you lose that fly, you could go, you could bump down to the consolation bracket, which is like any fly. Mm-hmm. But the fish that you caught on your one fly did not count towards that consolation bracket at all. You had to start over. I see. So my teammate and I, Luis, uh, we went out and we chose uh, this fly, which I don't know if you can see that. Mm-hmm. But is this is a zonker, a fly that I saw. Yeah, it's got a rabbit zonker tail and just a deer hair head, and then some chenille under there. Awesome. And some and some legs because if you're fishing for smallmouth, you need to have legs on your fly. <laughs> <laughs> uh so we picked that fly and we we were pretty much able to fish this fly all day but there was about 45 minutes when we first started the float where i was like oh man did we pick the wrong fly like <laughs> i don't know we haven't caught a fish yet and i'm just i was getting really nervous and then all of a sudden like i was fishing Luis was rowing the boat and i was fishing and i'm stripping that fly across kind of like the end of a pool where it starts to get shallow and the rocks are kind of built up and this smallmouth just came up from behind a rock and inhaled it and i got that fish to the net and the first fish of the day measured in at 16 and a half and so the weeks and i looked at each other like this is gonna be a good day <laughs> that is awesome 16 and a half is a good smallmouth especially compared to what i saw when we were up there uh, that's a good yeah. fish <laughs> yeah, it was a tank, man. It gave us a good fight. He at one point pulled pulled the my my rod tip like basically underneath the raft. So he gave me a good fight. That's awesome. What rod were you using? Uh for that fish I was on my Maxon Salish. It was a mm-hmm. seven weight. So I was glad to have the seven weight for that fish right. because uh he would have gave me the business with the six. <laughs> 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 that is awesome is that the fish that you took that awesome picture with halfway in the water yeah, yeah. dude that picture was freaking awesome yeah i got kind of lucky on that picture so um like i bought this bagel tin from walmart that's clear and plastic uh-huh. and i just stick the camera down in the in the tin and then like drop it in the water where it doesn't go fully submerged so the camera's just like in in the tin underwater and then snap the picture but the thing is is like when it's underwater I can't see on my camera, like what I'm taking a picture of really. So I was just firing yeah. shots and then that one turned out really good. So I was, I was pretty stoked whenever I saw it. Dude, it was freaking awesome. I saw it and I was like, how did he get that? Cause I have a, uh, <laughs> it's like a half dome that my GoPro can go in. So I can do the half underwater shot cause it displaces the water away from the lens. So you get that half and half shot, yeah. but it's hard to see, especially the little screen on the GoPro can't see where you're at. And so I took it to the Bahamas and didn't really get any good half and half shots. I think the only decent half and half shot I've gotten with it was when, uh, Jose was up here and we went and did the Buffalo. And I got a good shot of him in a pool. And it was crazy because the water was clear, but it was a huge deep hole. And so the water went from, you know, clear down to like dark blue. And then you just see him sitting on top. It was a pretty cool shot. And I got it lined up perfectly. But that's really the only decent shot I've gotten. Like those are tough shots to get. And the fact that you got one with not only the angler, but the net and the fish and the water, like it it was awesome. (laughs) Props to you on that one. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. You know, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, right? (laughs) <laughs> right <laughs> well i think it came out good so did y'all end up placing in the tournament at all yeah we we ended up in in second place uh so, oh wow yeah our top our top five fish measured in at 68 inches and the guy who won um thomas horseman his top five fish measured in at 71 inches oh wow so well, close it was real close and the thing that kills me i'm still it keeps me up at night still is uh I hooked the fish that probably would have won it for us because at this time we had five fish. We were at 68 inches. Our smallest fish was 12 and uh-huh. Thomas had 71 inches. So we just needed three inches to tie. We needed four inches to beat him. And I, I, we, <laughs> Luis and I, we come up on this water and I'm like, dude, this looks perfect. It's like you got current flowing in. You've got like rocks and a back eddy and you've got this like log sticking up over here. 
and it's just all screams like there's a big small mouth back here so i'm like all right just anchor stuff right here i'm gonna cast in so I, I put that fly in right behind the log and i let it sink for a second and it and then i strip it and the thing about this fly the reason i like it is because when you stop it it still moves and like that's what you want when you're fishing for smallmouth like they're gonna mm-hmm. eat when the fly is stopped but yeah. it needs to have some action still so like I, I stripped that one time, let it, let it pause and let it flutter there, right, right there next to the log. And this, I mean, he, it was at least, I mean, it was at least 15. It was probably 16 and a half. I think it was just as big as the first fish that I caught. This fish comes up, smokes the fly. I mean, annihilates it. And he dives down and straight under that log and wraps my leader up around the log. And then I'm, I'm like, got the rod tip way up here and then just you know lose all connection with that fish and break off and then at that point you know we're done because i lost the one fly and it was late enough in the day that we didn't really have time to start fishing other flies and try to compete in the constellation bracket so yeah so yeah anyways we we ended up in second place um but we were pretty stoked on that really for our first fly fishing tournament and to be honest i mean we had an amazing day on the river like it's not, it's not too often I get to take my raft out and spend eight hours on the river, uh, and just get to fish like hardcore with somebody else who, who really knows what they're doing too. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, epic day, epic day on the water, dude. It was just, it was so fun. Dude, it sounds like it. That's freaking awesome. That's crazy. Your first tournament, uh, like that and, and you come second. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, well, we had, you know, luckily, uh, I've, you know, being the small mouth junkie that I am, I've got all the stuff we needed. So, <laughs> so we had like, our setup was, I had my, my river rat. Uh, so we were, we were in the river rat, which is really easy to fish out of. Um, and then I had three rods rigged up because with the way that the tournament was structured, we could have, or we can only fish two, two flies of the same pattern. Mm-hmm. But I asked the guys, like, can we swap lines? And he said, yeah, you can swap lines. You just have to keep the same fly. So mm-hmm. I had, uh, four, well, we had four rods rigged up, but we only used three. I had an intermediate at a one to two inch per second. And I had a medium sink that's at three to five inches per second. And then I had a fast sink at eight inches per second. So we kind of just changed between all of those, those sink rates to get this fly to sink because this fly doesn't sink on its own. Like, if you fish it on a floating line, it's basically like a popper. I see. But so you change depth by changing the line's sink rate. And then you can fish that fly all over the water column, which is like, I think one of the most important things when it comes to fishing for smallmouth is putting the fly in the column that they're feeding in at that time. Right. So, so that's that's why I chose this fly because I knew that we could fish it in all the water columns if we just changed the the sink rate of our of our line. So that's awesome. I I like overthought everything about this tournament. I think that helped <laughs> us have some success. <laughs> well, it sounds like it because yeah, I would have never thought about that because whenever I'm going and targeting smallmouth, I'm always debating on which fly I'm going to use. You know for which column of water. And so it's like, okay, well, I'm going to have this fly if I'm going to fish top water and I'll throw it on my float line. And then I'll like, oh, well, I'll probably use a fly that's similar to this for my sink line. And I'll probably do this for my intermediate. Like I always do a different fly. I've never thought about what fly can fish all of the different areas of the water. So that's, yeah, that's pretty smart. And it, I mean, it did well for you. That's freaking awesome though. Yeah. Well, and, and normally I wouldn't fish that way. Like I would do the same thing you're talking about and change flies as I change, you know, in the water column. But when you're yeah. fishing the one fly tournament, you have to, you, you kind of stuck. So you got to awesome. get creative. So when, when you're measuring the fish and stuff like that, so I'm assuming you have to use like a hog trough or, or a catch board or something like that. It's something yep. regulated to measure it. Yep. That makes sense. And it's all yeah. length, right? Yeah, it was all length, no weight. Awesome. Yeah, I've done a few tournaments, but I've never done a fly fishing tournament. And so um, most of the tournaments that I do are uh, pickerel tournaments, actually, on Lower Lake DeGray here. And uh, it's it's a blast. Have you ever caught a pickerel? I have not. Dude, pickerel are fun to catch. They're not, you know, not as athletic as, as a smallmouth. They don't fight as hard, um, but they're toothy and they get big. I mean, I've the biggest one I've caught is 24 and a half inches. 
and um, they're they're fun to catch and uh, just I don't know. There's just something about the teeth that makes it more exciting for sure. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I've I've fished quite a few of those tournaments. But the issue is, is they're not kayak only tournaments and they're not fly only tournaments. And so um, oh, you'll yeah. be out there with guys running Alabama rigs off a bass boat, and I'm out there flipping around my fly rod on a kayak. You know, yeah. And, like, um, Good luck, bud. <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly and it, it's tough fishing i I came third one year it was actually it was the first or second year that i did it and i came third which i was amazed that i even placed um and the way that it's structured i think it's like first place gets 60 percent of the pot or 80 percent of the pot second place gets 40 or 20 and then uh, third place gets whatever you paid to get in um and then they'll do like a side pot for fly anglers only and then they'll do another side pot for big fish which it doesn't have to be a pickerel so if somebody catches like a a 25 inch bass or something then then that'll be the big fish or some people sometimes will go for drum or they'll go for carp or catfish or something like that just to get the big fish pot um so it's a fun tournament to do but when you're out there competing you know and i don't have a pedal drive kayak either so i remember one year i went out there it was probably i think it was in the 30s maybe the 40s no it was in the it was in the 30s so i remember there was still ice on the edge of the lake and everything and i'm out there it was like 20 mile per hour wind i'm paddling with my kayak fly fishing and there's guys out there in bass boats fishing it and i was like this is hell <laughs> i lasted about two or three hours and i said screw this i'm going i'm not gonna battle this it was tough fishing but tournaments are so fun yeah, that that it's tough whenever you get in the spot where that's I mean, and that's why this tournament was super fun, man. It's because like everybody's out there fly fishing. Like we're all handicapping ourselves by choosing one fly, and mm-hmm. you know, like we were just out there to have a good time, really. And it was that's tons awesome. of fun, tons of fun. I I really wanted to win the big fish prize, and my sixteen and a half was close. But the guy who won the tournament, Thomas, he his big fish was sixteen and three quarters so <laughs> man yeah so we we didn't quite win that one either which was a bummer i was like i told Luis, i was like man if we don't win anything uh the only the only one i really want to win is the big fish prize <laughs> mm-hmm. that's awesome yeah that's how that big pickerel that i caught was 24 and a half and i lost big fish by quarter inch and it was actually <laughs> another guy austin um and he, he's i think he started guiding around here um but he he had 24 and three quarter and i was like damn it austin (laughs) he ended up beating me out by a quarter inch but yeah tournaments are fun so where was the event after the tournament held at yeah so it was at uh king's river outfitters which is uh like south eureka springs but it's right on the king's river um it's really cool spot they have you know that like you can do canoe and kayak rentals and stuff like that out of there and they run shuttles um but yeah so after the tournament we went over there and they were you know cooking up hot dogs and hamburgers and they had uh they had beer that was given to us that was sponsored by like the local breweries here and Mm -hmm. they had a margarita machine and then uh, a little bit later in the evening they had some guys play some live music out there so like it was a it was a it was a great time man next year i'm definitely gonna there's another spot like right there that also rents like little glamping tents and stuff so i think next year Uh i'm just gonna you know rent one of those and and stay the night and enjoy the party Dude, that sounds like a good time. So last year I got invited to go. And if I'm not mistaken, I was either going to be in Texas when it was happening or there was something coming up where I don't think I was in the state. And um, I may have been in Alaska. It happened. I had something going on whenever it was happening. I was like, damn. And so I missed it. And that was the first one. And then I saw this year's second and I was like, oh, I'm definitely going to go to it. And then course i didn't so next year i'm gonna make it a point when they announce the date it's going on the calendar and i'm i'm freaking going next year <laughs> i think they already announced it actually i think it's uh don't quote me on this but i'm pretty sure may 30th is what they said okay so they're doing it i think they're yeah it's basically the same weekend that it was this year uh okay and the reason is is because last year i guess i didn't go last year either if i had something else come up too but Last year, uh, the flows, it was only running at like 150 CFS or like 100 CFS. I can't remember exactly, but just way mm-hmm. too low. Like people were dragging their rafts and there were guys out there with drift boats and stuff. So, I mean, if you're drift boating on the Kings at 100 CFS, like it's not going to be a good day for you. <laughs> yeah. So this year we had, uh, we got a little bit of rain the night before, which is why it was perfect, but mm-hmm. we were running at 400 CFS. So, um, I see. Anyways, 
May 30th, I'm pretty sure is what the date is for next year. So go ahead and mark it on your calendar. Yeah, I will definitely do that because <laughs> yeah. I'm going to make sure that I go. Did you get to go to the Fly Fishing Film Tour this year? Uh, no, I missed that one this year. It's it's kind of hard when I you got too. two kids. Like <laughs> I've got yeah. a, a two and a half year old and a six month old. So, um, but I really wanted to go to that. I went to it last year and mm -hmm. uh, we had a really good time. I got to meet some yeah, cool it's, people. So. It's good. I was bummed I missed it this year. Yeah, I missed it this year. And I last year I may have missed it. It was either last year or the year before that I that I went to. Um, but they were holding it in Little Rock and so I was able to make it to that one. And um yeah, I wasn't able to make this year's yeah, it was two years ago that I, I made it and I couldn't make it last year and I couldn't make it this year. And it's like ah. and I was looking at okay, well maybe I'll go to Dallas or maybe I'll go to Missouri or something like that, and I'll try to find another way um to plan something. And so I was gonna try to go to the one in St. Louis because I've heard there's musky in Missouri. And uh, so I reached out to a few people up there and I was like, well, maybe I could just make a weekend of it. I'll go and I'll do some musky fishing, watch the film tour. Oh, yeah. um, but if I'm not mistaken, I think that was the weekend that I was in the Bahamas. And so it's like everything always comes up whenever there's stuff I want to go to. <laughs> yeah. Here. But um, yeah, if I mark it on my calendar a year in advance, I'm going to make it happen. So <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Pin it. Cause like that, that tournament is a great time. Also hosted by the Mayfly project. So like I'm pretty sure we raised, I think it was like twenty five hundred dollars uh, that goes oh, wow. directly to the Fayetteville chapter. And mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not their spokesperson or anything, but they, I think uh, they they do like um, they teach kids who are in underprivileged, come from underprivileged homes, like how to fly fish. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, not their spokesperson. Don't quote me on that. So, but <laughs> it's uh, it goes to a good cause and uh, and it's a fun time. So. That's awesome. So not only is it a good time, it goes to a good cause and there's like almost an after party. So you were saying yeah. something about like the glamping tents and stuff. Is that by the Kings River Outfitters or is it just a company that's nearby? Yeah, it's, I think it's a separate company. Um, okay. It's called River Camp Dreams, I think. But I see. Uh, I follow them on Instagram. They post a lot of drone videos, which is why I remember them. But uh, but yeah, it's it's just right there. Like literally they have like little tiny homes and and glamping tents like basically right along the river it looks awesome that's awesome i might have to check it out as well yeah i'm looking yeah. for places to go camping up there um because on the tail end of the summer when it starts cooling down i want to go up there and do a lot more camping um have you ever fished so you said that y'all fished the north fork before have you ever been uh to dry run creek by chance i haven't i'm i'm excited for my son to become of age so that we can go check right. that place out <laughs> Yeah, I'm hoping but, to take yeah, my six year old there. Yeah, I've seen pictures and it looks incredible. It does. It looks absolutely insane. But uh, I want to know of a place that I can go camping nearby too, because because my youngest loves camping. My oldest enjoys camping, but my youngest is like she loves it. If she could go camping every day, she would. Um, when it's not too hot, of course. When it's hot, yeah. you know, it's a little different. But uh, yeah, so I'm hoping whenever it gets a little cooler, I think I want to take her up there and uh, try to get her on some trout um on the fly rod because she's only used a fly rod i think twice but she's never caught anything um right now she's still in her using her moana push button and catching brim which is great <laughs> yeah. um but i want to get her on the fly rod a little more and um there's a a five weight waiting for her so <laughs> i'm hoping nice. i can get her on some trout up there but yeah I've, n I've never been there and i haven't done too much research i've found where it was on the map and then uh looked up camping sites nearby so i'm hoping to go well, up there and do a lot more camping yeah I'm pretty sure it's close to uh, Norfolk, like at that dam area up there. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that there's a RV campsite right there at the dam. I see. So you can check that out. But if you're looking for something that's like a little bit more remote, I'm not not 100 percent sure. Yeah, I would spend a lot of time over in that area. Like I still haven't even. I mean, I've fished the white before below Bull Shoals, but it's mm -hmm. been a long time, and I haven't. Uh, I haven't really like tried to stream or fish it and catch big browns or anything out there yet. So that's something I really want to do. Dude, it's a blast. We went out there. So me and Jose went up there. Um, do you remember when Garth Brooks came and played at the Arkansas stadium? Yeah. So we went to the Garth concert and then after that we decided we want to go fish and caught her. And, um, dude, it was a blast. I never, neither of us had caught a brown trout up to that point. And, um, we weren't really ever trout fishermen to begin with. And, but we always wanted to get on a big brown trout. And so we get there and we are, we hired a guide. Um, and so we went out there and before he got there, me and him were just, me and Jose were just fishing from the bank and, uh, caught a couple of rainbows. 
and um and then we go the guide shows up it was uh eddie line drifters kyle bogart is, is the one oh, that takes yeah. it out and uh dude we went out there and we were just tearing them up at first we're tearing up the rainbows no 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 i lie we were throwing streamers first because this is the tail end of streamer season. And we're like, oh, we just want to throw streamers because we're streamer junkies. You know, we're, we're yeah. warm water species yeah. fishermen and we weren't catching anything. And Kyle's like, eh, we're probably going to have to go throw some nymphs on. And so we throw the <laughs> nymphs on and we start tearing them up. And I immediately caught like a 20 something inch brown. I caught a big, like the biggest cutthroat that Kyle said he's ever seen on his boat. Um, and then I wow. hooked into another big brown and we lost it. And Jose was catching a couple rainbows, um, but he was gung ho like I'm gonna catch something on a streamer, and um, <laughs> he ended up catching his first brown, and it, it happened to be on a streamer. Um, nice. But I took the, the easy way out, and I was throwing. I think we we're throwing little purple duro cells, and um, dude, they were tearing okay. them up. And I made this perfect cast. We were coming past this boulder, and you could see the change of the water right on the edge of the ripple. And I cast it right on the back side of that boulder, and then probably about two seconds, I just let it drift and set the hook and it freaking brown trout came out of nowhere and then it, it ended up going across the front of the boat like two or three times and uh, <laughs> kyle was like oh anytime they go they cross the front of the boat like we use we lose the fish every time and and i kept it every single time and then we got it and he was about to net it and we lost it at the net and i was like no. Oh, no. all i saw was this huge hook jaw and i was like oh dude it was freaking huge but yeah uh, it was still a blast i love fish i've fished the white twice and both times i've had an absolute blast yeah, yeah, we really want to get out there, man. So if you if you want to make a trip out there, let me know. We could maybe uh, make a film out of it or something. Oh, dude, that would be awesome. You know, I saw a video recently. I can't remember who posted it, but is there a spot where the white and the buffalo converge? Yeah. So he made a video there, and he was going up the white, catching trout, and they came back down and started catching smallmouth going up the buffalo. Yeah. I feel like that would be a fun video to make. <laughs> no doubt, you know. <laughs> you don't have to twist my arm to to try to catch those two fish in the same day. That'd be pretty sweet. Right. And the only thing I think we need is a jet boat to be able to do that. So yeah. I don't know you if you got to be able to get up from water. Yeah. Uh, I think I have a couple. <laughs> we've reached out to some people and uh, yeah, maybe we can get out there and go do it for sure. Yeah. Cause uh, just a little bit further upstream is where Crooked Creek also dumps into the white. So similar situation you could go up Crooked Creek and catch smallmouth too. Hmm. Well, that'd probably be a little bit easier to get up to the trout from Crooked Creek than where it converges with the buffalo, huh? Maybe so. Yeah. Hmm. Well, let's talk about that more off the podcast. Yeah. Maybe it depends on that. <laughs> I feel like that'd be an awesome trip to do. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So you said you're a smallmouth junkie. When did you first start getting into catching smallmouth? Man, so uh, my journey into fly fishing, uh, I owe a lot of it to smallmouth, really. It's funny because I lived out in Colorado for like five years and really out in Colorado, all I did was mountain bike. And mm. I, I got a fly rod when I was living out there. I think my dad got me one for Christmas one year. And I was like, I don't know, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll use this sometimes whenever I'm like camping next to a creek or something. And so like occasionally I'll go out and flail around with a fly rod and like, you know, with like 5X, 6X tippet and these tiny little bugs. And like every time I would go trout fishing in Colorado, I just end up getting tangled up and frustrated basically. And like hardly mm -hmm. ever caught any fish. So, <laughs> so then I, when I moved back to Arkansas, I just went to Little Sugar Creek and I had just like a couple of little flies. I think I had a Clouser minnow and I had my like eight and a half foot five weight dry fly rod with a floating line. And I just went to Little Sugar Creek and I was casting that little Clouser minnow into just this tiny little creek and I just caught like five smallmouth in a day which was like more fish than I'd ever caught in a single day fishing in Colorado in my entire life so it's like man <laughs> I think uh, I think I like fishing for smallmouth better than fishing for trout so I mean that's really what started it man and then like um just the accessibility living here in northwest Arkansas like I can drive 10 minutes and be on a awesome smallmouth creek or I could drive an hour to go fish the beaver tailwaters for, you know, stock trout. So it's like, right. I'm just going to go fish for smallmouth on my <laughs> creek right here. Yeah. So that, that's really sense. what, yeah, that's really what started it for me. That's awesome. And then, it, yeah. And then as you get into it, it's always like a progression, right? So like you catch one and you're like, all right, well, I'm going to, you know, watch this video or listen to this podcast and learn maybe some t tips and techniques and how to catch more or like how to catch bigger fish. And so like, you know, I just got lost in the rabbit hole, man. I like 
I've pretty much watched every YouTube video about smallmouth fishing. And I probably listen to almost every podcast about smallmouth fishing. Like I just, uh, I just can't get enough of it. So just the way that they eat, it keeps me coming back. Yeah, for sure. It's awesome. And they, it's crazy how aggressive they are, you know, in comparison to a largemouth or a spotted bass. I mean, cause they're very similar fish, but their temperament to me is more, I guess kind of, kind of reminiscent of a trout. Like they like the moving water more than they like the structure and still water, which oh, yeah. you can catch them in eddies and, and structure for sure. Um, but they seem to like the moving water more, but they just fight so much harder. I don't know what it is, but you'll, you'll catch a small mouth that's, you know, six inches smaller than a large mouth and it'll have just as much fight in it. It's insane. Oh, for sure. Yeah. You always know, like, I mean, you, when you, when you set the hook on a fish in a creek, you can kind of tell, you know, like you, you'll you set the hook at first and you're like, man, this is going to be a nice fish. And then all of a sudden it just like stops fighting. And you're like, ah, must be a rock bass or a, or a large <laughs> mouth or something, you know? But yep. a small mouth, like you get them hooked and they are just going to dig and dig and dig and try to wear you out. Yeah. And they fight until you get them in the net. And then even then they're still fighting. <laughs> still fighting. Yeah. They do not yep. want you to take pictures of them. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. It's hard to get a good picture. One yeah, of the pictures that you posted wiggly. the other day, the fish was freaking, I mean, spotted up and colored like crazy. Like that was an absolutely gorgeous fish. Yeah, so um, I think the photo you're talking about is from, uh, so I went out on a, a creek that shall remain nameless, but um, <laughs> it's a creek around here, and I had my buddy show it to me, and we went up there, and we just floated on our paddle boards, and to be honest with you, I have to admit, we were fishing with conventional gear that day. I brought mm -hmm. fly rods, but really my, my intention for the trip was to get photos and videos and stuff. Um, but so I brought a fly rod and I, I was fishing the fly a little bit and just, they weren't really chasing and he was fishing conventional and he had on a little crawl pattern, like in a purple color, some kind, I don't know. I don't know anything about conventional fishing, to be honest with you. I just fly fish, but, uh, he was like, here, he had an extra rod. He was like, here, you want to, you want to try this? So I was, we were fishing with conventional gear that day. And I mean, we tore him up, man. We caught, man, we probably caught. I would say at least six or seven fish that were over 15 inches. And then oh, wow. between the two of us, I think we netted probably 30 fish. It was crazy. That's insane. <clears throat> that is awesome. You can't beat a day like that, even if it's unconventional, you know, yeah. the way that I see it is <laughs> I, I'm not fly or die. I'm pretty much fly or die. Like I can't remember the last time I even casted a conventional rod, but I mean, you got to have tools in the toolbox, you know, conventional yeah. is just another, another way. If you're not catching them on the fly and you have the means and you're just trying to catch them, like, why not? Or if you're camping or in a survival situation, like to have the knowledge on how to catch it unconventional, like it's not a bad thing to have. I enjoy fly fishing more, but if I'm not catching anything and I get, you know, pitched the opportunity, Hey, I got an extra spinning rod. I'd probably take it up. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Especially when he's hooked into like two 17 inch fish, you're like, ah, uh, yeah, I think I'll, I think I'll give it a shot. But yeah, right. I'm like, I'm the same way, man. I, I mean, I, all I really know is fly fishing. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have a background in conventional fishing, so it's just like, that's just the tool that I know how to use. So that's just what I default right. to. But to be honest with you, in a situation like we had the other day where they just weren't looking up, I probably wouldn't have caught many fish that day because like as a, a streamer junkie, I just like to throw streamers. I really hate like bouncing crawl patterns on the bottom. So mm -hmm. I probably just would have been like, well, I guess I'm just not going to catch any fish today and I'm going to enjoy the float. <laughs> So in that scenario, it almost makes me want to get a conventional rod set up so that I can just like, if they're not looking up and chasing a streamer, just throw, you know, if I'm going to fish the bottom, I'm just going to use a spinning rod because right. fishing the bottom on a fly rod is just not that fun. <laughs> it's not. And dude, I always seem to get freaking hooked up every single time. Like I get tangled on something. I get hooked, you know, caught yeah. on a rock I get caught on a log. And just especially when you're in moving water. Yeah, exactly. You lose flies like freaking crazy. And uh, I, I I do fish, fish the bottom quite often, though. Um, but I just, it's not nearly as fun as, you know, running a bait fish streamer or something like that or, or no. topwater takes early in the morning. Like, can't beat it. But 
Uh, crowd patterns are probably one of my least, I mean, with the exception of like nymphing and, and using, you know, strike indicators, like that's probably oh, yeah. below fishing crowd patterns, but crowd patterns are pretty low <laughs> on the list. But, um, speaking of like, you know, listening to every other podcast and watching every other video, uh, have you listened to the most recent Ozark podcast with Keith Reeves? I did. Yeah. Dude, I was actually was really interested in that one. Man. Yeah. I was uh, too. Uh, Clayton, Clayton, uh, from Red Sky Service, he, we were talking about that fly, the uh, uh, Hada Creaky Crawler, mm-hmm. I think is what yep. it's called. Um, we were talking about that fly, and he was like, yeah, that fly was developed by, I always thought it was a Dwayne Hada fly, and he was like, no, nah, it was developed by um, by Keith Reeves, and I was like, I feel like I've heard that name. So I looked him up on Instagram, and I was like, oh, yeah, I've been following this guy. And, yeah, he catches a ton of smallmouth out there, I'm pretty sure, mostly on Crooked Creek, but um, mm-hmm. seems like, he really knows his stuff, man. He seems like a legit dude. So I was super interested to hear his his philosophy on on flies because like those guys out there on Crooked Creek and Clayton and I saw that when we went out there and fished. Um, they pretty much have to like that water is always super low and super clear. Like you pretty much have to run a super long like just eight pound leader to a tiny little craw, you know, in order hmm. to get in order to like not spook the fish and and right. they. And they really don't, I mean, from what we saw, they weren't really chasing streamers a whole lot because they were just hiding under rocks and stuff and were a little bit timid to come out. But uh, so I was really interested to hear his philosophy because he, listening to that podcast, recently got in, I guess, the streamer fishing and was talking about fishing the double deceiver, which is one of my favorite flies. So that was mm-hmm. fun, fun to hear him talk about that. I, I was impressed by the fact that he was talking about how he dissects a, a piece of water, you know, like, like a piece of pie. And then he was saying to fish, what, what do they call it? The the secret river or whatever, the water that's closest yeah, to you on yeah. whatever bank you're on that nobody fishes. And I was like, I, I literally have never done that. The only time that I've ever done that is when I was younger. Um, there was a spot in Seguin, Texas where I would fish the river and I can't, I want to say it was like probably the Kamal river or something, but there was a, an area right next to this big grassy knoll and then I guess they had built the bank up with, um, like, uh, what's that on the side of the highway guardrail. So they'd put a guardrail, um, to build up the bank. And so I would cast down the bank. So I was fishing the water close to me cause that's where the bass were. But that's the only time in my entire life I've ever fished the water closest to me. Normally it's like, Oh, I see that log. I see that rock. I see that eddy. Like I'm trying <laughs> to get across to that. Um, yeah. but I'm going to have to start trying to fish the water closest to me. Um, I, I never even thought about it, but they talked about that on that past episode. I was like, that is a good idea. <laughs> like yeah. the way he explained how he dissected it. So I have that same problem. I mean, and I, he, he said it too. It was like when you're fishing streamers, you just want to go out there and like hit the juiciest looking spot in the creek yeah. and like you just forget about everything else. And that's, I definitely do that. And sometimes I'll be like walking through a hole and it's just like, oh, there was a huge small mouth that just swam past my foot. I don't know what he was doing right there, but he's gone right. now. So <laughs> <laughs> he probably ain't going by now. <laughs> yeah. Have you listened to their episode with Jackson Butt? Yeah, I did. And I actually met Jackson out at the uh, smallmouth shootout. We had to see really? some of his flies that he talked about. Yeah. Dude, his freaking pictures. Have, do you follow him on social? Yeah. Dude, his pictures are freaking awesome. I come across him by accident. I think it was in probably Facebook page, uh, Arkansas Fly Fish Facebook page or something like that. And I was like, oh, this dude's pictures are always awesome. And so I've been following him for a good while because of that. But he he's really good at photography. Yeah, he's got a pretty wicked setup too. I mean, he's running a, a Sony A7R4 with like a, I think he said he has like a 200 to 400 G Master lens or something like that. So that's oh, pretty wow. legit. Because <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. asking him, he loves a canoe. And I'm like, dude, why do you like canoes? They're just heavy and like bulky, you know? And, uh, cause I love, I love the paddleboard. It's so light and convenient and like easy to take into like small creeks and stuff like that. But he was mm-hmm. like, you know, I'm carrying around like all this camera gear and he listed off his stuff. I'm like, oh, well, you got pretty nice stuff. <laughs> yeah. I, I'd want that in a canoe instead of a paddleboard any day. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> so what's the verdict? I saw you posted the other day that you're thinking about getting rid of your paddleboard. Have you decided? No, I was thinking about getting rid of the mountain bike and, uh, getting rid of the mountain bike. That's buying right. Buying a paddleboard. Like every time I go paddleboarding, I usually borrow from Luis, uh, who was my I partner see. in the smallmouth shootout. But uh, so I'm thinking about getting my own. And I was I posted that kind of I have some some buddies from Colorado who are big mountain bikers, and I knew that they would 
that that would pretty much hurt their feelings if I posted that. So, <laughs> and I got, I got some replies from them. They were like, you better not. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll disown you. <laughs> I'm not necessarily trying to, to sell my mountain bike to get out of it. I was just going to downgrade to a slightly less expensive mountain bike and then buy a paddleboard. So I see we'll that see. makes sense. The, what kind of mountain the, bike do you run right now? Right now I have a, a Nolly fugitive. Um, so it's a aluminum frame and I've got like, Fox factory suspension on it. Like I bought it whenever I used to work at a bike company. So I worked for this bike company in Colorado. And uh, right before I left that company, I actually got this bike on like a killer deal. So, so it's a really nice bike and it's probably too much bike for me uh, being a dad of two young kids and like getting to ride once, you know, like once every two months. Um, right. So my, my thought was since I have the Creek close to my house, like maybe I should just, you know, downgrade the mountain bike and get a paddleboard. I don't think that's a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've actually never used a paddleboard garage. though. Right. <laughs> I've Man, heard that they're fun. easier to, to maneuver though. They're, they're lighter. They're easier to get around and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Yeah. And there's some, there's some spots like, especially on the Illinois river where you guys fished, uh, mm -hmm. that are really good for smallmouth fishing that you can't, I can't, put my raft in you know like it's just you know it's like a trail you got to walk down a trail through some trees to get to the bank of the river so having a paddleboard mm. for stuff like that like you can carry it in you know get in right there you can float down so like what i always do is like float downstream and then you can come back upstream with a paddleboard you can't do that with That's a raft sick. yeah so it makes it uh it just like opens up the amount of water that you can access it makes it so easy to get to, to places Hmm, that makes sense. Yeah. I, I see a lot of people using them like in central Texas on, uh, you know, Lady Bird Lake in Austin and stuff like that, just kind of using it for recreational. But it wasn't until recently that I started seeing people fishing on them. And um, I really didn't know, know much about them. But if you're because you float higher in the water than if you're obviously in a canoe or a raft or a kayak or anything like that. So I, I guess it would make more sense that you could go upstream a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. Probably I mean, a lot easier when... for a single person trip. Yeah, when we were, yeah, and the thing, that's the thing, it's like, if you don't have somebody to give you a shuttle, you got to go back upstream, right? So, yep. <laughs> having that, uh, so, I mean, you could walk and wade, but having the ability to float down makes your downstream movement faster, and then you can come back upstream easier. Yeah. You know, because, like, walking up, up river is probably the hardest thing we do as fly fishermen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why normally I'll try to go upstream first <laughs> and then yeah. try to come back down just because it's easier on your legs at the end of the day. Same yeah. thing with a the kayak. There's been, you know, sometimes if the water's not flowing too fast and I find a spot where it's like, oh, I'll kayak that, I'll kayak upstream and then float back down to where, I pay, where I'm going to take out at just because I get the hard work done first. And then, yep. you know, granted, you do go over some of the fish sometime and uh, you might you may bust some spots, but uh, it'll save you in the long run if, if you don't want to be too tired coming back to your vehicle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I mean, typically, if you give those fish like ten minutes, they're like back to good to go. So right, <laughs> yeah, it's yes, worth it. Sir. Well, that works. Well, man, it's uh coming up on an hour, and that's about the time limit that we have for these episodes. So I really appreciate you coming on. We had a, a a nice little chat, and glad that our listeners get to understand more about the business and uh, what all you offer. So where can they find you at? Um, I know I mentioned a little bit about your socials, but in terms of the Ozark Media Group stuff, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you? Yeah, uh, man, I'm all over social media at Ozark Media Group. Uh, it's all you have to search on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and I uh, have my own website, ozark-media-group.com. Um, and then on that website, I got my phone number, email address, all that stuff. Uh, if anybody wants to, to make a video, or need some photos for their social media or for their website or anything like that, yeah, just uh, drop me a line. All righty. And I'll put all that information in the description as well. So that way you can just go there and find it. And uh, man, I really appreciate you hopping on. It was good. And uh, you're welcome on anytime if you ever want to do another episode. And uh, for those of y'all listening, thank y'all for making it to the end. And we'll catch y'all next time. This has been Wildlife Outdoors. Thanks for listening. Follow us on Facebook at Wildlife Outdoors and on Instagram at wild.life.outdoors. Let's go live life on the wild side.